What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. In this video, I have a very special guest. Uh, he's gonna tell us all about the field of transplant surgery and also uh, some advice and tips for you guys. Uh, welcome Dr. Watkins, I appreciate you uh, joining me tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me brother, I appreciate it. Yeah. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and tell the uh, audience or the viewers about yourself, a little bit about yourself, where you went to, you did your training that, and uh, okay. your position. Yeah, so I, um, I was born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, um, unlike many people, I actually had an interest in medicine and science at an early age. Um, I, know, I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was around the age of nine. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather, uh, who's retired now, was a cardiothoracic surgeon. Yeah. Um, so knowing that I had a family member who was a surgeon uh, instilled in me a lot of confidence and the belief that I could also uh, achieve that. And I actually say that because even though he was a surgeon, I didn't actually meet him until I was a junior in college. So I used yeah. that inspiration of just knowing that uh, to you know, push me forward. Uh, but I went to I went to HBCU and went to Fisk University for undergrad, mm -hmm. and biology and pre med. Uh, then went to medical school in Memphis. Um, in medical school, that's why I figured I wanted to be a surgeon. Uh, so I, I did my surgical training in New Jersey at uh, UMD and J. Uh -huh. And then uh, while while I was a surgical resident, I got exposed to the field of transplant surgery. Uh, I was really just fascinated with the ability to. It's kind of like science fiction, and you can. You can take an, an old organ and replace it with something that's, that's new and, and yeah. vital and, and really transform a patient's life. So that was, you know, the surgeries, you know, very uh, maximally invasive surgery yeah. can be totally demanding and also could do the minimally invasive stuff. So I like the combination of, of the surgical uh, aspects of transplant as well as the medical, you know, a lot of comorbidities with the upper thyroid patients, meaning high blood pressure, diabetes, the immunosuppression medication management aspect as well. Um, but anyway, so that's that attracted me to transplant. So I did my transplant fellowship at uh, Columbia, uh, uh -huh. in Columbia. And then I worked there for a year when I was finished. Uh, after finishing, and then I transferred to, to Cornell, where I've been now for about six years. Okay. At New York Presbyterian Wild Cornell. Okay. And I, and I essentially practiced uh, transplant, transplantation. So I transplant liver, uh, kidney, and pancreas. Um, and I'm also the, the general surgery program director. So I oversee the training of the residents who are pursuing a career in surgery. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask you for the people who don't understand what a transplant surgeon is. <laughs> right, right. Can you kind of break that down for them. But like, yeah. What is a transplant surgeon? Right, so the transplant surgeons are typically either abdominal transplant surgeons or the chest. So the chest is gonna be the lung or heart, abdominals, the liver, kidney, pancreas, um, and small bowel. Uh, but essentially what we do is, you know, people have end stage organ disease, whether it's liver, kidney, or pancreas. Yeah. Uh, well, pancreas, I'll, I'll explain that, but, you know, kidney or organs from them, those patients and transplant them into uh, people who are in need. So we essentially replace kidneys or, or livers. And then in pancreas, you know, people have a very bad diabetes that affects their kidneys. We can also replace uh, their pancreas so that they can uh, have a functioning, uh, minimize the effects of diabetes on their body. Okay, and what was it about transplant surgery that uh, got you interested in? I know you did your general surgery residency and then you did a fellowship. Uh, what was it about transplant surgery that kind of drew you in? Well, I think, uh, the thing I liked about transplant is it really encompasses all aspects of medicine. Um, yeah. You know, we you know we have to use immunosuppression medication, i.e. anti-rejection medication to um, prevent, try to prevent rejection of our patients. So there's a there's a significant knowledge base that's required for the management of that medication, as well as the additional medical diseases that those patients have. But obviously at the core, what I do as well is a surgical component. So the liver transplant, the kidney transplants, the doing, doing the living donor, yeah. um, living donors. There's so many different um, angles that transplant provides, a very maximally invasive surgery, as I said before, doing liver transplant surgery. A huge incision, long cases, yeah. 12, 12 hours. Whereas 
with the donors, people who are donating a uh, kidney, for example, we use a five centimeter incision to do that laparoscopically. So I can do everything from very invasive to minimally invasive procedures, the medical components, and you know the continuity of care with the patients, which I think is also something that a lot of other surgical specialties lack. Meaning, I see my patients, uh, you know, usually yeah. uh, to a year after they're transplanted, whereas other specialties might have a, a shorter, gotcha. uh, yeah, post-operative, you know, relationship. Okay, um, I didn't do a transplant surgery rotation in medical school, but uh, I know you mentioned the the uh, surgeries are some of them are twelve hours long. Uh, what is the longest surgery kind of transplant that you have done? Oh, so when I was a when I was a fellow at Columbia, we did a uh, fifty-five hour surgery. Wow! Uh, and it was an ex vivo uh, procedure where essentially a gentleman had a, a, a cancer that was um, encased in several of his organs. So we essentially, you know, I was a fellow. So with a gentleman named Dr. Cato, who's really world renowned, world renowned for this uh, type yep. of procedure. You know, took the liver out, the stomach, part of the intestines, um, and then the, the pancreas, and then removed this tumor, and then put yeah. these structures back in. Um, so it was really intense procedure. It was it was um, I was present probably for about I say roughly eighteen, I think about twenty hours of the case, well, and then, yeah. then my co fellow, yeah, I scrubbed that in. They scrubbed in, but you know, I, I came back, you know, at the tail end of it. So I think all in all, I was scrubbed in for about roughly 26 hours. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking about fellowship, I know residency is five to seven years for general surgery. Well, so it's five years, but then five years. Uh, uh, many people do one to two years of research, which adds those additional years. Okay. It's a five, -year, five year training program. And how long for the fellowship? The transplant fellowship is, is so it's two years. Two years, okay. So four years of medical school, five years of plus or minus two for residency, then two years of um, transplant okay. fellowship. Right. Okay. And when I think about busy kind of surgeons and lifestyles, um, CT surgery and transplant surgery come to my mind. Uh, how's the lifestyle as a transplant surgeon? Do you even have a life outside of, uh, of medicine? Right, right, right. Well, you know, lifestyle is, you know, I think is this what kind of lifestyle you you know you enjoy i mean i think yeah. the passion for what i do uh makes the the lifestyle so to speak uh fine with me but it is the hours are definitely uh long it definitely can be challenging because you know we work essentially on a non-elective kind of schedule for the most part yeah. right so meaning okay. that there's a donor available you know that's when we're going to do the transplant so for example on thanksgiving i was doing a transplant uh, the day after I did two transplants, those were scheduled or it could be three o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, the hours can be long, uh, but it's very rewarding. And I, you know, and, and, you know, what I do is I try to, you know, I, I try to make sure I enjoy the, the time spent in the OR. So some good music, good vibes, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, you know, make sure I just have fun with what I enjoy doing. Yeah. How many hours a week would you say you work as a, as On, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's one those are one of those things that I, I rarely have look I rarely look at, but I say roughly if you do it a day by day, I mean you're talking Monday through Friday, it's roughly I say roughly ten hours. Um and then there's some weekend. I mean that's on average, but yeah. you know, there are some weeks when I'm on so when I'm on call obviously. Um there could be late cases and then, you know, because I am the program director, there are several administrative responsibilities that I have that typically keep me at work late. So on average, I'm at work, I say a given day, I'm at work around eight o'clock, unless I have a surgery at 7.30, so then I'm at seven. And then I usually leave work around uh, about seven. So actually 12 hours a day. Yeah, 12 hours a day. About okay. Days. And speaking about your role as a the program director for general sur uh, surgery, what do you look for kind of in applicants? What makes one applicant kind of stand out from another when you're uh, searching for applicants to your program? Right, so I mean, I, there's a lot of different, you know, aspects of a candidate that I look at because in this day and age, you know, you know I think historically people try to look at individuals from, you know, their, their grades or what they get on yeah. their, their boards, you know, what they, what was their, you know, what institution did they come from? You know, was it a high power? What I try to do is we have a process where we really take our applicants. We have a, a first set point, you know, of a, a set step score, and then we divide the applications up between our team of us. And we really go through the application. And what I'm looking at is 
you know, the, the motivation to be a surgeon, you know, maybe in their personal statement, you can get a hint of that. Maybe um, you can see through the, the many community services or extracurricular activities that they, you know, have, have participated in, i.e. global health, you yeah. know, free clinics in, in, in underserved areas. Um, then letters of recommendations, you know, what are, what are their, you know, their attendings, what are their, what do they say about the candidates? What, what stood out from them that made them very um, unique? I mean, because really in this day and age, we need, you know, in my opinion, we need people who are intellectually, you know, you know, obviously intact, but also are di diverse, bring something uh, to the table that mm -hmm. that is different from others, right? You know, and that they have a vision for their career, a vision for surgery, and that shows you that they can not only come and learn, you know, but they also can contribute in a meaningful way to the program. So um, definitely just try to look at people's life experiences, their passion, um, and try to use that to also gauge, you know, you know, a good candidate for our program. And, and someone who's interested in being an academic surgeon, a future leader in our field. Yeah. And what do you have to uh, say when people, they look at the field of surgery and they say it's a busy lifestyle, uh, I want to have a family, I want to do this and travel and do all those other things. What do you say to people who uh, are interested in surgery but are kind of intimidated by the lifestyle? Right, and I think that's only natural. I think if you don't ask those questions, then you're you're not normal, right? Because I think we all we all have, you know, many of us, not all, but many of us desire have to have a family, and many of us want to have a work life balance. Yeah. Um, these are so these are questions that I that I even ask myself. I mean, at one point I had, you know, switched to emergency medicine because I was I was I was concerned that the the hours in surgery uh, would be too arduous. But the reality is, is that you know, you could work a nine to five, making a ton of money and not be happy. Yeah. Or you could be doing a job that you're working twice as, as hard, but you, you enjoy, you have a passion for what you're doing. I think that is the number one rule that, yes, they're going to, I think to be good at anything is going to require a lot of time and effort. Gotcha. I mean, I say all the time, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, these entertainers, they yeah. put a lot of work that you don't see behind the scenes. So. You know, I think if you want to be great in anything, Kobe, you know, Michael Jordan, yeah. you have to put in that time. But yeah. I think if you have the passion and that you know for what you enjoy doing, then that makes the the lifestyle aspect um, more palatable. And I think when it go, you just have to be, con you know, you have to be careful to make sure you achieve that work life balance, so you are able to to remove yourself from from the, the job and spend time with family. You know, participate in whatever outlets you you have available to relieve stress, etc. I think if you're able to make sure you do that, then you're good. Gotcha. And I, I was in the same situation trying to decide between surgery because I heard about the lifestyle, but I and I was in between surgery and emergency medicine. Ended up right, choosing right. surgery because that's what I love. I, I would rather be in the operating room than anything else. And exactly. even though it's a lot of work, I think uh, uh, I would rather be more happy than anything else at work. So that's why I chose. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, and I think that, yeah, I mean, in another driving, you know, um, statement I would make to prospective people who are interested in medicine is that, you know, there's a strong need. I mean, so sometimes you have to also look at it like, you know, I am, I don't want to say paying a price, but, you know, this is bigger than just you or me, right? You know, yeah. what we do and what we represent, you know, there's such a, there's such a huge need for, for us you know, I, sometimes I look at, you know, I look at what we do as as, as being bigger than us and that, that the impact is, 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 is bigger than, okay, how does it affect me in my daily lifestyle? We're thinking about all the other people and all the intangible ways that you're making a huge impact as far as mentoring, mm -hmm. um, you know, giving people inspiration um, and even giving patients, you know, an opportunity to have someone take care of them that, that looks like them. Gotcha. Uh, any last minute advice you have for those interested either in a field of medicine or a field of surgery? What, what kind of advice would you uh, give for those budding surgeons or medical students? Right. You know, I always want to, I have to stress the passion element because I think mm -hmm. that, you know, I think in this day and age, uh, passion and a love for what you do can set, you know, that's the key ingredient necessary in order for you to achieve success. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would like to stress again is that, you know, there's a huge need, you know, for diversity in medicine. Um, 
So for anyone who's interested in medicine, um, if, if they are of our URM background or underrepresented mm -hmm. minority, I even further encourage them to, to, to really look at not only medicine, but the STEM fields, uh, okay. because there, there is a, a huge need for our representation and there's a lot that we can bring to the table. Um, make sure that you uh, find mentors, role mm -hmm. models, because um, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, are sitting where they are sitting or, or sitting where we are that are can help uh, support and mentor to to bring more people through the pipeline. Gotcha. Um, three last questions. I always ask this to everyone that I interview. Uh, maybe, maybe one, two word answer. Uh, your favorite food? What would you say your favorite food is? The Juno Souls chicken. Gotcha. Uh, what is your favorite organ to transplant? Liver. Liver? Okay. And your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Listen to music. Listen to music. Awesome. Well, Dr. Watkins, I, mean, I appreciate you coming on uh, uh, with me tonight. I'm pretty sure your story is going to inspire a lot of people. Uh, congrats on all your success, especially it inspires me to see, even see someone who looks like me in such a prestigious uh, role and a... Uh, as a transplant surgeon, I've never met a black transplant surgeon, so I want to salute to you, man. And, uh, thank you, for all your success. Uh, you. But um, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you, and I'd like to say, you know, look, I've, I've been watching you for a long time. It's a pleasure to finally yeah. meet you. Um, you're true inspiration, not only to the people, you know, out in the, uh, the universe that you touch through social media, but even people such as myself, because, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing a major, you know, a major role in, in getting the, the word out of you yeah. know, the fact that there are people that look like us. So I applaud you what you're doing, brother. Keep doing it. I hope that 2008 continues, you know, was even bigger than 2017 for you. All right. All right. Yeah. And stay strong. And everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.